Okay, I'm the Reverend David Downing from Century, a nice reformed church. We've been worshipping this morning with Reverend Dr. Kirsty Thorpe, uh, who's here as moderator of the United Reformed Church. And I wondered if you could just tell us where you've been over the last few days. Yes, David, we've had a joint meeting of Methodist Council and the United Reformed Church's Mission Council at Swanwick from Wednesday to Friday of this last week, which is the first time those two councils have ever met alongside one another. Lots of important people, lots of days together. What were the sort of things you were talking about? Well, obviously we needed to do some work separately, but in our joint sessions, we spent some time thinking about youth and children's work and how our two teams of staff leaders and our local churches can develop the partnerships they already have and build on them and resource things for the future. We also spent quite a bit of time thinking about our joint stock of church buildings and we agreed together that we're going to set up some further group work to help bring some recommendations to both denominations as to how we move to the future with some of our buildings uh, because there's so much work that we can do side by side which will be better resourced if we do it together rather than doing it separately. And also we uh, discussed issues of the recession and poverty and made some commitments together to stand alongside the poor in this country who are going to be adversely affected by the cuts that are coming up soon in the uh, uh, Chancellor's forthcoming statement about things. The three things you mentioned there seem quite clearly to be building on some of the real strengths that each denomination has been building on. What would you say, having come from those few days, was the one thing that you've hopefully felt encouraged most about? I felt that one of the most exciting things was that we were being real with one another. The danger is that when you bring together two councils of the church with a lot of things on their agenda, then everybody stays on the surface polite level and there's no honesty and depth of discussion with one another about where our relationships aren't always totally smooth on the ground or at all levels of church life. And it felt to me as though we struck a balance and got it right in terms of worshipping together and also saying to one another, here are some of the areas where our relationships aren't always terribly easy and here are some of the sticking points and there are things that we can work on more. But I think that facing those difficulties in a positive way and saying, but we still see that we have more in common with one another than uh, we have than separates us was a valuable thing to have done. Nobody has said definitely whether we will meet again in this way, but I think that most people came away feeling it was a positive thing to have done, and so I'm hopeful for the future that it's not the first and the last time. That sounds really hopeful. I think it is, yes. It made a lot of sense to be in the same place with one another, and uh, some of the best conversations, as often happens on these occasions, are the ones that took place over the meal tables, or even, dare I say it, with reference to Methodists, in the bar in the evening. Yeah. Our view of them that they don't drink is certainly way out of date. <laughs> well, you've been more than welcome here for this morning in Derby. It sounds like Derbyshire has been quite, uh, quite important this week for both groups coming together. Yes, of course, the Swanwick Declaration, historically, was a moment when all the churches in this country committed themselves in a new way to walking alongside one another. So perhaps this is a special county in terms of bringing de denominations together to work ecumenically. I think it is. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you.